Hi friends, this is Terry Squires with today's Nashville This Is Faith. I sat down with Reba Rambo and she shared her journey from a little girl to touring with the Rambos to what she's doing today. You won't want to miss this episode. The Lord will give you a new beginning, a new season. He makes all things new. At the age of 13, Grammy and Dove Award winner Reba Rambo started singing with her parents, Buck and Dottie Rambo, the Rambos. During this time, her father had multiple heart attacks that took him off the road. This led Reba to sing with Andre Crouch, who showed her the power of God's healing and her father's health. God lifted her up, and today she continues to share Jesus to others with her journey in music. This is her story. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith. Reba, I am so excited Aww. to sit down with you. Thank you for coming to my show. Thank you for being so beautiful. It's so nice to look across and oh. see just gorgeous bright eyes and well, beautiful smile. You are beautiful too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But welcome to today's oh. Nashville. I love your faith. I love your story. I love your music. Thank you. I want my friends who are watching to know all about you. So let's go all the way back <laughs> from the beginning. 72 years ago. <laughs> Yes, I was born in, in a little place called Dawson Springs, Kentucky. And my, the little community we lived in was called Walnut Grove, had 36 people in it. But I was raised in, you know, in very country ways, went to a little Pentecostal church growing up. And my mom and dad, my mother started traveling when she was 12 and started singing full time. And my dad was saved in one of her crusades. And they got married at 16 and 18. I came along a few months later. But my whole life has been music. No, let's Jameson. talk about your mom and oh, your mom and Dottie, dad. Dottie Rambo. Nobody writes songs like mother. As a matter of fact, Day One is just doing a new project with all these different groups honoring her songs because they live on. And she wrote hundreds of songs, hundreds of songs. And so I was raised around a creative mom and dad. But mom was always making up stories and making up songs. And we'd make up songs together. So I started writing before I could physically write. I would make up poems and things like that. And she so encouraged that and was such a role model to me uh, in all that. But we lived in, in poor conditions in Kentucky. When I was about 13 years old, I just turned 13 as a matter of fact, I started singing full time with my parents, which December 1st will be 60 years ago. I can't even believe it, where is it gone? But I, I grew up with music, with laughter, with books, uh, with mother was a word thief. She would st she'd say, "I'm still on that word." <laughs> she would have me write it down for. Her. Uh, but she she loved words, and she put that passion for writing and creativity in me. What was it like to be on the road at 13? I mean, did you go to high school? Did you go to you know? I went through the ninth grade. Okay. And then I started traveling, and it was kind of a fluke that I say happened. Mom and Dad, the the person that was singing with them left to get married. And so they quickly auditioned people and hired this girl named Pat Jones, it was her name then. And she was a great musician, but when they got to our little house trailer in Kentucky to rehearse where we lived, she was an alto. And two altos, my mom's an alto, two altos and a lead do not make a trio. So one day at, uh, out of my frustration of you know why, why she couldn't hear the part, I said, Pat, the part goes like this and began to sing. Uh, with mom and dad, of course, my mother cries, my dad's grinning, and they said, would you just stay with us till we find somebody else? <laughs> and you were 13 at this time? I was 13 years old, yes. So till you find somebody else, till they could find somebody else, and I ended up staying. I always wanted to be a neurosurgeon. I didn't, I didn't want to be a singer. 
because I'd seen what all my mom and dad went through, staying in church basements and those kind of things, because there was no glamour to it back then. I can tell you that. About a year into the, the time on the road, I be, my heart began to change. One thing, I was so bashful. I'd look about six inches above all the audience's head, would not look anybody in the eye, never said a word on stage till I went on my own years later. Uh, I was so bashful, but uh, now I've kind of got over the bashful thing. <laughs> so after 13, mm -hmm. where was your faith at this time? You know what? My faith was strong because my parents' faith was strong. Uh, and they, they, my mother showed me a Jesus that I could follow. And so did my dad. My dad was very practical. You know, he was the business person behind it all. Uh, but my faith was strong. And it really wasn't until later, a little later in life that it wasn't so strong. My dad had uh, five heart attacks in one year and was told he could never minister again. My friend Andre and, and Sandra Crouch, invited me to get on their bus supposedly for a two-week tour, and I ended up I ended up staying a year and a half. So your dad never sang again? He well, let me tell you, it's an awesome story. We were the, the disciples, Andre Crest and the disciples, we were coming through Nashville about 3 o'clock one morning, and Andre comes into mine and Sandra's little room on the bus, and he said, the Lord spoke to me, we're going to stop the bus and pray for your dad. Well, there were like 14 of us on the bus. So we pull up, I directed them to mom and dad's house and, and mom was out by the door pacing. She said, the Lord told me you were coming. So all 14 of us gathered around my dad's bed and I mean, they prayed, uh, they, they prayed the fire down <laughs> and the Lord healed my dad. And so we started singing, I started singing some more with the Rambos again. And how old were you then? Oh, probably older than I want to admit. Let's see, I was 20, I was like 21. What was it like to be on the road all the time? <laughs> it was very different being with the disciples and the Rambos. The Rambos was family, and uh, but the disciples was a mixed group. As a matter of fact, I think I'm the only white singer they had in, in the group. And uh, they lived in California. I went to a, an all-black church. Uh, Papa Crouch was the pastor. So it was a big change for me from the hills of Kentucky to there. And it was so fun. It was exactly what I needed. I learned so much. Uh, you know, Bishop Jake says that he's never met anyone that's prejudiced, that's well-traveled. That whenever you're well-traveled, you begin to understand culture and, and native things and, and traditions and how things work. And I had such an education in that year and a half traveling with them. What was it like to come back and tour with your parents then? You know what? It was tough at first because with the disciples, it was mainly people my age or close to my age. So to come back with your parents at first was tough. But then we started booking tours with the disciples and the Rambos, which is quite the combo. And we'd blend stuff together. It was like the first homecoming. You know, maybe that's where Gaither got his ideas. <laughs> but it was, it was exciting to be together and be friends. Danny Bell Hall and I were very, very close. I don't know if you're familiar with that name, but she was with the, the group and traveling with them. So it, it kind of became two, two groups and, and two buses that we all were blending together. <laughs> What's a memory that you can remember uh, being on the road that's something that you just will never forget? Well, I'll never forget, I was booked to do my first con solo concert, my second solo concert, and I was to open for Andre and the Disciples. They got caught in a blizzard and couldn't come. There was 30, about 3,500 paid admission concert to hear Andre, and I'm this new kid on the block that you know, most of them didn't know the Rambos. So anyway, um, they got in the blizzard, and I was backstage, and, and I was a wreck, and the, the MC began to say, they can't be here, and, but we've got this young gal from Kentucky, and she's going to bless you. And it was, uh, it was amazing. And I had, that was the first time I had an angelic visitation. And the Lord sent angels all around me and said, you just lift me up. And the angels would go out and do the work. So I began singing, lift him up, lift him up, lift the name of Jesus higher, lift him up, raise his banner to the sky. And I wrote that song on the stage, first time that ever happened. And we had over 300 people accept the Lord that night. So it was, it, was quite, it was quite an evening. <laughs> well, we're going to talk more about what God has done in your life. You've faced a lot of struggles, mm -hmm. but a lot of success, and we're going to talk about it when we come yes, back. Yes, ma'am. Reba, when did you know that God was pulling you into a solo career? 
My relationship with the Lord really changed when I was 13. I forgot to tell you this. I had spinal meningitis. I was 12. And I uh, uh, was in a coma for three days with 108, 109 temperature. All my hair had fallen out because my fever was so high. And the doctor said if I lived, I'd be a vegetable, uh, that my brain was entirely damaged. But, you know, I had a praying mom and dad and a praying grandma and a praying church. And supernaturally, the Lord raised me up. I went to heaven in those three days and, and went swimming with Jesus in the river and had an amazing encounter with the Lord. But that really changed my relationship with him in that I, I, I knew the person of Christ. And uh, I remember when I felt this tug that I, he was pulling me back to the earth that I needed to go back. And he said, I said, you know, I, I want to stay here with you. I mean, who wouldn't? And uh, he said, and he took my face in his hands. He said, I would, I would consider it a personal favor if you'd go back. You know, you got to love a man like that. So I went back. So my, my, my uh, just relationship with him was very personal. Even when I kind of got off track a little bit, it was, I was very aware of Jesus and aware of the presence of Holy Spirit. I love traveling with my family, but I had, and I hadn't made a record for a while but kind of on a default, I started making an album called Lady. And so many of my friends... Did very well. <laughs> yeah. So many of my friends were a part of it and, and just got... Phil Johnson, the great producer, got behind it. It was the biggest selling Christian record that year. But it, and then it was nominated for Grammy, and then it won the Dove Award for Contemporary Christian Music, which they didn't even have that category. They had to invent a new category because it was just such a new thing that so many of us were starting to do. Larry Norman, people like that, second chapter of Acts, the Archers were beginning to do a whole new form of music. So I started getting all these calls to come to colleges, to come to Jesus festivals, and to do my music. And I really tried to work it where I could do both, but it just, it, you know, I understand a little bit you can't serve two masters. And, and my, my parents really wanted me to commit one way or another because it was hard for them. So I just really, I, I knew it was the right thing. I still know it was the right thing to do, to go out on my own. Were they and, supportive? Uh, at first, my dad went to bed for about two weeks because <laughs> he and I were very close. And uh, so it, it, was, it was tough. It was really tough, and we really tried to make it work. But, you know, more than anything else, we're family. And we, we all came to that conclusion. Much more than a singing group, we're a family. And you were only child, right? Only child, yes, yes, just me. <laughs> what it was the inspiration behind Lady? You know, it's a, a song about Mary, actually. But it kind of, the Lady album kind of stuck, and people began to call me Reba Lady which I think of Reba Hillbilly, you know, God speaks Hillbilly as far as I'm concerned. But um, it just kind of stuck. Uh, but, but it was really about Mary. I've always had a fascination for Mary, you know, knowing that she was probably 14, 15 years old, small town girl like me. And so many things I've related to about her. The album started with, I did an arrangement of Just As I Am, the old hymn, and it was very contemporary. And that's kind of how the springboard of that album happened. But it really just catapulted me into a whole new dimension. And Jesus music was suddenly huge. And, and I loved it. I loved it. Where did God take you after that? Well, after that, uh, when, I, when Donnie and I got married, we wrote a musical. One of the first things we did together was to write a musical called The Lord's Prayer. And we were so privileged to work with people like B.J. Thomas and the Archers and Cynthia Clausen and uh, Walter and Tremaine Hawkins and, of course, Andre and put together the Lord's Prayer. We broke it down into single lines. And each line became a song. And we had no clue that it would get no, not only nominated for the Grammy, but we could perform six minutes of it on the, on the Grammys. And then it won. I mean, we were all so nervous about singing on the Grammys. Who had even given a thought about it winning? So that what was, was that like? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking down, and there's Diana Ross standing up, and Barbara Streisand standing up and applauding, and you're like, it, it was a very surreal moment. It really, really was. But it was so precious. And that a work like that based on the Lord's Prayer, I mean, you just don't hear about things like that, uh, that it was so, so scriptural. Every song was a prayer. So it was, it, it was very, um, it, it was so rewarding and it made me so happy. So after the Grammys, mm -hmm. where did your career go then? Well, uh, Donnie and I began traveling and singing and writing a whole lot of songs. Uh, with our group, Rambo McGuire, and, uh, and it was great. And then 
I had my first child when I, in 1986. Destiny was born after seven doctors said I could not have children, that there was no way. I'd had three uh, miscarriages and three corrective surgeries and a lot of humiliating procedures. And they said, there's no way your body can carry a child. But you know what? We'd heard, we'd heard the word. I'd seen a vision uh, of a child when, when Donnie and I were first married, and we just clung tight to that. As a matter of fact, Donnie had me go to a photo studio, and he bought me the most beautiful maternity dress and put a pillow in it, and I turned sideways and made a, made a picture. And he had them all over the place because he kept saying, if I can see it, I can seize it. So in 1988, uh, 86, Destiny was born. In 1988, Israel Anthem was born. What a blessing. <laughs> and they traveled with us, yes. What was your mom and dad doing at this time? Mom and dad were still singing some. Uh, and mother, of course, they ended up, sadly, they divorced. You know, mother had 11 back surgeries. They went through so much physically and emotionally with her. Dad really kind of retired more than anything else. He did a few things. But mom continued on singing in spite of the pain. I mean, she's my hero, that she would have this horrible pain and get up. But the anointing would hit her, and those she's shoes would so come flying people. off. And I tell you, it was like she became another person. And you lost her in 2008? 2008 on Mother's Day, yeah, in the bus wreck, which was insane. She was the only uh, fatality in the bus wreck. Other people were injured severely, but, but she was the only fatality. And that was hard because there wasn't the goodbyes and you didn't get to, to go through a lot of things like that together. But you know what? Before she died, she kept looking up at, at the ceiling and saying, Jesus, you can come get me anytime. I'm ready. I want to go. And we're all going, Mom, don't say that. And she's like, no, I'm ready. I'm ready. She, she knew. Somehow she knew that it was going to happen. And now her music lives on. And she has touched millions and millions. Millions of people, yes. We're going to talk about what God has done in your life, some of the struggles you've had. Yes, ma'am. And what he's going to, where he's taking you in the future. Yes, ma'am. When we come back. Reba, we talked about, you know, how much glamour it is to be traveling around the world <laughs> and the Grammys and everything. But... With that, it really, life creeps in there. Boy, it does. It does. And, and it's, if you want to know how glamorous it is, get on a bus with me or and take the, the schedules that we have for flying. There are some things about it that are that. But most, it's hard work. It, I, mean, I don't it know. Is, it is hard work. I, I've, I've talked to so many people that are on the road, and, and, and I, you stop and you think, oh, what a life. But it's like, oh, I don't know. They're gone all well, the we time. Used, when I was with the Rambos, we did 300 dates a year. So you That's do the math. That's a lot. So, I mean, but, and then when Donnie and I were together, we, we, you know, we did revivals. We had seven years of revival together. Um, and we uh, did over 3,500 services in seven years. And that was a whole nother kind of energy and uh, putting out. And But, you know, the it was one of my that, favorite times. Yeah, I mean, you probably have seen hundreds and hundreds of people come to the Lord. We, we really, really have. And then you don't know, know even the people you've touched on television through TBN, praise the Lord, different things like that. But, you know, it's so rewarding. It's so, I, I'm doing exactly what I need to be doing. You know, five years ago, Donnie, uh, five and a half years ago, stepped out of our marriage and it was a total surprise. And we had worked together for all the, almost 40 years and uh, had been songwriting partners and ministry partners. And, and it was a very tough time. And I'll be honest, I crashed and burned. I, I had a total breakdown and ended up uh, in a place outside of Nashville for seven weeks uh, on a suicide watch for a couple of those weeks. And you think, well, you, I'll never be there. I know too much word. I know Jesus. But you, you can't tell what life will throw at you. But I can honestly say I have such passion now for people with mental health issues to get help. There is help out there. There is spiritual help and there's natural help. Uh, there's help with your diet. There's help with exercise. There's so many things that contribute to all of that. But to see how the Lord brought me out of that place, I, was, I would be staying with my daughter, Destiny, and her husband, and I remember she came in one morning and I was in a fetal position and she's like, mom, you have to do one thing today. And I'm like, what is that? She said, you have to brush your teeth. I mean, and that's how, that's how, and I've always been a very positive and up person, and, but it, it almost took me out. But in the middle of all that, 
I was fixing my pillows one night because I had to make a pillow person because you sleep with somebody 40 years you get used to another body being in the bed. So I made my pillow person and I was just having a rough night and I looked over and instead of the pillows, the Lord was there. He was lying there and he said, I'll be your husband. And he has been my husband. He has been my friend. He has been my business advisor. Uh, and it has just been an incredible thing to see now that I, uh, uh, I'm not doing therapy now anymore just as of a couple of months ago. My therapist says, if you need me, I'm here, but you're doing great. And it's, it's, it's a miracle. It really is a miracle. So I, I just want to say, if you're struggling mentally, if you're struggling with thoughts that are not your own or struggling with thoughts of suicide, there is help out there. There's a suicide hotline. There's help with your pastors, with your teachers, with your friends. You're not in this alone. That is so powerful. So where has God taken you now? Well, it's really interesting. Just some, some unusual doors began to open up for me. Uh, one of the doors is to work with Brother Kenneth Copeland. As a matter of fact, I leave for Southwest Believers Convention on Sunday, and I'm there for a week, three services a day, so you pray for me. <laughs> but uh, God's kind of brought me full circle back to the Word of Faith roots uh, that I had many, many years ago. And uh, so I'm working with him. There's a, a wonderful minister. I don't know if you know Dr. Nancy Dufresne. She's fantastic. And I do a lot of her crusades and things with her. So it's been more back to church, back to crusades, that sort of thing. And my daughter Destiny and I, Destiny is an amazing singer. And we just are finishing an album called Rambo Women, which it has songs by my mother, by me, and by Destiny. She's an amazing When writer. is that going to release uh, you? I hope it will be out in the next six months or so. We're just trying to finish it up when we can all get together and do this. But she is also traveling some with Brother Copeland and with Dr. Dufresne. And she is, my, my, my ceiling is her floor, which is the way it should be. She's just, she's a freak of nature. <laughs> what is, um, I'm going to ask you, would you sing a, a chorus of one of your? You know what, sure. Um, years ago, we were out on a houseboat and been riding. And uh, one morning when the mist was coming up from the water, Donnie had this weird look in his eye. Like he, he some people come down with a cold, he comes down with a song. <laughs> so we went into the little living room on the houseboat when there was a little keyboard there. And he started singing, morning sun. And I would sing, light of creation, grassy fields, a velvet floor, silver clouds, a shimmering curtain he's designed. A perfect world. I'm amazed at his talents, standing of one so great. Now my soul begins to sing out to the source from which it came. Bless the Lord who reigns in beauty. Bless the Lord who reigns with wisdom and with power. Bless the Lord who reigns my life with so much love. He can make a perfect heart. And what's so interesting about that, we just finished that little demo, and Ralph Carmichael was the head of Light Records. That's the label we were with at the time. He said, you know, my brother is scheduled for a heart transplant. Do you mind if I take the little demo of that song? And they put it on auto-repeat, auto and he played it for hours and hours and hours and hours. And finally, he received a heart, and they went to the hospital and when they cut him open to do the heart transplant, the doctor says, why is he in here for heart transplant? This man has a perfect heart. And he had so gotten that into his spirit that he had a perfect heart. So they gave the heart to somebody else. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, you know, we, that's the power of, of the word in song. Mm -hmm. uh, it does bring healing. It, it, that's why I think Jesus, you know, admonished us to be in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs because we never know how holy, holy sneaky, I call it, moves through a song. If somebody is watching today mm -hmm. who doesn't know Jesus, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? Oh, he's the best. He is, he's so kind. He's much gentler than, than some of us were made to think. God himself is, is love. He is, I mean, 1 Corinthians 13, go read it and you'll find out who God is. And that's who Jesus is. And you know what? That's who you really are. Your authentic self is that love nature that God has placed within each one of us. And I want to encourage you, it's not hard. All you have to do is just say, yes, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to be your child. I want to work with you. I give my life to you. 
and it, it, it it's being born again. Now, now you've got to grow up a little bit, but there's nothing like walking with Jesus. Now, he's so personal. He's concerned about everything that concerns me. You know, Reba, God has taken you from a, an amazing journey. Yes, ma'am. Where's he taking you now? What's well, next for you? You know what? I'm, I'm loving writing. I'm working on a couple of books. Uh, I'm, I'm loving writing, but I'm also loving traveling. I, it's amazing because I, the surge of energy that I have in the last six months, uh, because I was having some back issues myself, but to the strength of the Lord and the wide open doors of opportunity. I mean, I, I didn't try to push one of them open. They, the, the doors opened in front of me and said, come on in. And so that's exciting for me. I'm just so blessed to sit down. Thank, Thank you, you so Terry. much for all you're doing and, and uh, sharing his word and blessing others. I just love you. I love you back. <laughs> My friend, are you wondering if you should follow Jesus? Say yes today. He's right there. Take his hand. He'll lead you on an amazing journey. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.